All right, you all. So today I'm going to show you some of my top study methods that I used while I was in nursing school. Some of you may or may not know I graduated at the top of my class when I was in nursing school. And your girl definitely used a lot of different ways to study. So make sure you stay tuned. I have full videos going over all of these different study tips uh so definitely go watch those full videos and leave a comment down below what's your favorite way to study let me know if there's any more specific videos you want to see and congrats to everyone who is getting into nursing school just started nursing school or you're doing prereqs getting ready for school good luck and congratulations you all and as always like comment and subscribe follow me on instagram and the facebook group i know it's look a little janky but you know we're gonna make it look cute in a minute all right, so one easy way that a lot of people like to study is to do flashcards. I have different ways of doing them. Of course, I have a video that you all can reference that goes way more into depth, but I used to do definitions. So right here, I would do um, abbreviations, or um, and then on the back, I would have the actual full term on the back, um, but you can also just do a definition, just have on here hypertension, and then on the back you put high blood pressure, things like that. That's one way to do it. The next way is to make it into a question. So this is common cardiovascular, common cardio changes seen when a patient's uh, death is imminent. Then I have all the different things that you would see on the back there. Then the last way, which to me is like the fun way to do it, is to actually put photos on your flashcards. And on the back, you could have like questions on it. And then boom, you have your photo on here that really goes into depth. All I would do is just print off the PowerPoints that we had from class. And then I put all my info on that one little flashcard. Boom, it's all on there. It's in your own words. You can add color to it. You can also photocopy uh, from the book as well. And then you can probably get them really cheap either at your school or you could do it at your local library for really cheap or free. So that's our first way of studying is to make <laughs> the first way of studying is to make flashcards second which i've learned this kind of like at the end of nursing school but i love this is making freaking concept maps so basically this is a great way of taking something really complicated and then branching off from it and making it a lot easier and more condensed all on one sheet of paper so you just take one thing a drug a disease anything that you have to study put it in the middle and then branch off of that anything that has to do with this so for usually for um any type of diseases you need to know the diagnosis like what helps you to diagnose this disease um what signs and symptoms then you have the complications what happens uh if this is untreated or what can happen over time pathophysiology what actually is happening within your body how are we treating it either medically with therapy with different drugs uh surgery things like that and then something specific to that to that uh disease like asthma i put over here is that there's different episodes that come with asthma so acute and late episodes so i do have a video going over this as well so go watch it but um this is super awesome you can put it in your sleeve all of your study materials you can really put in these really cute sleeves super simple super cheap sleeves that you can get from the dollar store the dollar store yeah the dollar store and keep them in your binder it's a great way to study you can put it on freaking scrap paper i think I, yeah i have this on scrap paper so Reduce, reuse, recycle, make concept maps. Go watch my video showing you all an in-depth concept map, but I love it. Do different colors, different little photos, and it's just a great way for you to remember such complicated, big subjects. So our second option is concept maps. Like, comment, and subscribe. Next, which at the, I did this thing in my nursing program as well, but I love it. It's such a structured way to freaking study, and it's so simple so easy so you can make these little charts i have videos showing you all how to make these charts and do it on word print them off and then you can add anything that you need to add on here you can even make them where you don't have these words at the top you add in whatever words you need to add and then take it to class as your teacher is going over the material write it in the best way to study is to study while you're in class make your study material then take this home and use this to study off of okay so with this, I put disease, again, for disease, you need to know the causes of it, um, the risk factors, signs and symptoms, how do we diagnose it and how do we treat it? 
and also if you're even more visual you can take a uh, like you can take this concept with the flashcards and print off like different uh photos of the disease or how does it look on a person if it's like a skin disease something like that print that out and boom put it right in there in the little box for you that way you can have a visual along with the written and it'll help it's a connect better in your mind. So make these, take them to class, fill them in while you're in class, share them with your classmates. Boom, info charts or charts or whatever you wanna call it, but I'm gonna call them info charts. That is a third way to study. All right, our fourth way of studying, I use this in pharmacology because we had to learn 10 drugs and we had to learn like these drugs inside and out. Um, so what I did was I made these little info sheets and I used some scrap paper once again from 2014. Um, and this is like our schedule that we had at class and it was a huge sheet and I just cut them in half and used that as my study uh, material sheets. And I put in like a photo of some kidneys with the bladder to go over Lasix, which is a diuretic that works on your bladder, I mean on your kidneys. And I put in the different um, things that you need to know when it comes to learning about drugs. So we had to know the actual dosage for them, the indications. So why will we be using this, the side effects or adverse reaction, patient teaching, which y'all is so freaking important when it comes to drugs, really anything patient teaching is really important. And then also uh, how was this actually acting in your body? So as you can see, I did that for all the different drugs we had to learn. And I put like, this is supposed to be like a little brain because it's an SSRI and it works on your brain. I put little photos in the background to try to get me to remember them. Like for insulin, I put a little ice cream comb because I'm like, okay, diabetes, sugar, da, da, da. So if you can connect it to something that kind of looks more visually appealing, different colors, um, and then also when you study, make study material, don't just do one block of words. Kind of have stuff spaced out. Um, it's easier for your brain to digest things that way, at least for me. Let me know if that's how it is for you all. But just looking at a huge block of words, I completely get shut down. Like after a while, I don't even want to look at it because it's just so overwhelming. So put stuff, kind of space them out a little bit and have them for each one. You see, I have everything the exact same spot. That way, when I am thinking in my mind about this, when I'm going back and like say I have a test or whatever, I think, okay, it was a bottom left corner patient teaching, da, 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 that type of thing. You want to have, an, well, at least for me with these, I put everything in the same spot. So it's like, I can always recall where it was on the piece of paper. I put all the different, um, what do you call them? Normal doses at the top left corner, things like that for me, help me to learn, help me to remember because it's always in the same spot and I just close my eyes and try to visualize this. And I think about, okay, I got this heart in the background with all this stuff coming out from the heart. Okay, boom, I got the sunglasses, visual disturbances. And I would put like a little picture of sunglasses with yellow and green because oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> do different things, write little different stuff that helps you remember. Blurred vision, I put sunglasses and I put little squiggly lines on their headache. I put a little person and I put put stuff coming out from their head. Things like that help you to remember it. Alcohol, I put a little wine glass and I put um, a line through it because you need to avoid alcohol. Stuff like that helps you remember. Plus you make it like little cute, different colors. This is small, like I said, reuse the inf reuse pieces of paper that you already have. Put this in your plastic sleeve and boom, there's an info sheet. This is taking a complicated concept this drug has a lot going on with it and you put it into bite-sized chunks for you to remember and then from this you can make flashcards based just off of this so you will put what are nitroglycerin actions boom put all that on one flashcard all that on one flashcard boom 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 but you also have another way of looking at it all on one sheet of paper that you can take to work take to class and look at it okay so one of the other ways that I used was I combined Envo sheets. Um, so in combining these along with my concept sheets or concept maps. And I would put more than one drug or more than one disease on one sheet of paper. But I would make sure they, that somehow they were connected to, to each other. So this right here are anti-anginal drugs. And I put the, there was different classes though. So there were calcium channel blockers that were anti-anginal and nitrates. And I would have them all on one sheet that way. Um, 
I'm learning about them all at the same time, but I do have them blocked off because I know that they're separate. You know what I'm saying? Like they're separate adverse reactions for each drug, but they both treat angina. And in the in the middle, I will put, okay, what is angina? What do you do if a patient um, has an uh, anginal episode? Is that a such a thing? <laughs> but if somebody is experiencing acute angina, what do we do? Different things like that. I put it in the middle because it pertains to both drugs um, because it has to do with angina, but it's not specific just to one drug, if that makes any sense. Again, diuretics, I put right here, um, what are the action of diuretics? And then I have different types of diuretics and all of them do have their own specific actions, but ultimately what it does is it removes fluid from off your body. Um, and then right here I put patient teaching because the patient teaching is pretty much the same for all the different drugs. So I put it all in, this, all in one box so I don't have to keep rewriting the same exact thing. So if you have something um, that's pretty much around the same topic or that is the same topic, Put it on one sheet, separate it so that, that you can have specific things for that drug or that disease or that whatever. Have that separate, but have things that are in the similar in the in the middle, kind of like a Venn diagram. Do you might all remember doing that in middle school? Those Venn diagrams, you know, they did that for a reason. It helps you to learn. You can even do a freaking Venn diagram if you wanted to. So that's that. And again, put it in your plastic sleeves. I love these. I have had these since you saw on that sheet it said 2014 i'm filming this video in 2019 and look how good these still look put stuff in plastic sleeves okay if you don't do anything get you some dollar store plastic sleeves so another way that you can make study material is to use your actual textbook so a beautiful teacher by the name of Miss lopez she was our med search teacher she made us these study sheets they were blank and when we came to class we would fill them out while she lectured and I, you can see i just stopped filling them out i guess um but she we would fill them out while she lectured but she made these verbatim from the actual book so as you can see she would put this at the top anatomy and physiology and then she would go over all these different things that you need to know that had to do with the nervous system she just did it based off of this it says anatomy and physiology anatomy and physiology and then she would just go by the next page age related changes so she would use these different headings as different parts that she would go over in her lecture nursing assessment of neurologic function boom you get your patient history you do a physical exam what does this say physical exam health history so you use your headings and your subheadings and you put it on here. You type all this out before you come to class. So this is a way to actually go over your um, book before class and type all this stuff out. Uh, leave some space in between each part. Fill it in while you're in class so that you can be active while you're in class. You're not just sitting there looking at the teacher, trying to figure some things out, twiddling your thumbs. You can actually be active. This is a great way to do to create study material before you go to class. Common therapeutic measures, drug therapy, surgery. Post-op. Yeah, I was, ooh, I was a highlighting fiend, y'all. Um, post, uh, let me know if y'all want to see a highlighting video because I had a certain method that I used to highlight, y'all. Like, I was, yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, just use your book. Use the subheadings, and the subheadings and the headings to create study outlines and fill it out when you come to class. It's a perfectly easy way to study. This is what I was saying. If your teacher does not give you a study guide, just come to the front of the chapter and go to where it says objectives and use this as your study guide. Make flashcards based off of this. Make study questions based off of this. Go over these different things in your study groups. This is what is gonna be on your test. These objectives, you need to know all this stuff um, before the test, if you don't know it, go back in the chapter and reread that area again. Okay, so look, identify common neurological changes in the older person and the impl impl uh, implication of these for nursing care. So basically, what are the changes and what do we do to treat it? What's in my nail? Oh, nothing. Okay, 
So yeah, go over all of them, use this as your study guide. You can even take these, put each question and type it out, just like how we did our outline, type it out, give yourself some space to write it out. And then a way of you to, a way to study for the test is like the day before the test, write out all the answers. And if you come to a stomach like, okay, wait, I can't remember, boom, go, that's when you need to know, okay, I gotta go back in the book and read over this spot or go back in my notes and figure it out and then go back and write it down again. That's a good way to study and test yourself and see, do I really understand this information? And then also if you want, you can make um, your definition type of flashcards based off the key terms as well. So those are the different ways to study. I hope you all found this video helpful. Please go and look at the full length videos that I have for each one of these. Go check out the study playlist and like, comment, and subscribe. Share my videos if you find them helpful. Follow me on IG, follow the Facebook group because I'm going to be posting, our, or I might already have a lot of these photos on the Facebook group. So go follow us over there. Let me know what you all want to see next. Peace.